everybody. I'm Chandler, and I'm going to talk to you about a clean and minimal map API. Microphone, microphone. Words. A clean and minimal map API because that totally fits inside of a lightning talk, right? All right, unfortunately, there is going to be a tremendous amount of code. That means that this lightning talk is this, and you are the dog. I'm very sorry. Um, but we're going to try and make it work. So I believe there are four fundamental APIs in a map data type. Okay, those four are lookup, insert, update, and remove. And yes, they all line up perfectly, and that is part of why I love this API. So let's talk about lookup. Lookup on a map does what you kind of expect. It takes a key, looks it up to see if it's in the map. It can fail, and, and we have to model that. So let's look at the return type to understand how we model that. Lookup result has a Boolean, so you can tell whether or not it succeeded, right? whether we found an entry. You can also get the key and the value if it has actually found an entry. Makes sense? Pretty straightforward. Insert we also know pretty well, right? We want to insert something into the map if we don't have it. We also need to understand whether the insert took place, so we have this special return type, okay? The insert can tell you, you know, did we actually insert this into the map? We also can get the key and the value that uh, we're talking about here. Now, it's a little bit tricky to store this. We actually have to have a separate, you know, thing for the key and for the uh, inserted, and, that, and we, we store these in a single location because most people don't need to dig the key back out, so this doesn't even slow it down very much, and it keeps it nice and small. Update is interesting because we don't usually have update on our map types in C++, which I really, really dislike. Okay, and so what update does is it inserts if it's not in the map, but if it is in the map, it updates the value anyways. Okay, now interestingly, this still returns an insert result because we actually want the same set of information from insert. You know, we want to know, did we actually insert it? And we need the key and the value. Okay, the last API that's fundamental is remove. Here we give it a key. We want to remove an entry. And we have a special return type to make this a lot more functional than most removals. Okay, so we can look at it. We have a Boolean to indicate, did we actually remove something from the map? And then we also can get the key and the value that we just removed. And because we actually removed them, they're not on the map anymore, so we can actually take ownership over them if we want. Make sense? Super, super elegant. All right, and this is just the surface. So the question is, do we want to go deeper? This is where you go and vote for me. Come on. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, so we're gonna go deeper. So there's some other APIs that are useful. These aren't fundamental because you can build these on the other APIs, but you probably want to have them and they may be able to be implemented more efficiently. We have square brackets, which is what you probably are doing most of the time you're doing a lookup, right? It works the same way as lookup, but it just returns you a value star. Now value star is a little bit weird. I would love to return an optional value reference, but I can't return an optional reference. So instead I return a value star, which is really lame because I can do arithmetic on the return value, but anyways, we'll fix that someday. We also have contains. This just tests whether a key is on the map, okay? It returns a bool, and we can actually implement this a lot more efficiently than an actual lookup. And lastly, you can, of course, iterate over the map. That's pretty normal. But we actually didn't do a good job of implementing our map API. We want heterogeneous lookup. So we need to add a bunch of template gook to the stuff, and like, like thread is typed down, but it actually all still lines up. It's all still the same, and it's just as beautiful, I think. But we also want more interesting insert kind of operations because it's really inefficient for us to pass by value every single time. Sure, if we're mapping to an int, it's fine, but sometimes it's a big object. So we also have overloads of these, and it doesn't change the concept, but it lets us do things more efficiently. So we can pass a type erased callable here, so we use function ref for that, and then this callable just returns us a value. And we don't call this unless we need to do the insert, and we return the value. Of course, update always calls it because it has to always do the update. Make sense? Pretty straightforward. We can do even more cool stuff. We can have an overload which accepts a callable with this interesting type. And this actually calls this uh, callable with the storage that it needs to construct the value into. And you can imagine you have some lambda down here and you can actually like do a little place new over the storage to actually construct this. This doesn't allocate new memory, but it allows you to totally control the construction of your type. For, you know, for power users, they get this powerful interface, but if you just have a simple use case, you don't have to have new APIs. All right, we can do even more interesting things because your key type may also be interesting and difficult to construct. So you can actually pass both the key storage and the value storage that you need to construct over, okay? So we have a key storage, we have a value storage, and you can write a lambda that handles this. Now these lambdas will tend to get a little bit more complicated. You might need to you know, actually capture something that you're gonna use as part of your state for actually doing the construction, and then you do the placement new to actually set things up, okay? A simple, consistent interface all the way through here. And for update, of course, this is always called. And for insert, you only call it when you're doing an insert. People vaguely happy? All right. So should we go even deeper? I don't know, Michael. Should we go even deeper? How's my vote? I've got zero up here. OK, OK. So, so, so what do people think? Are you going to vote? Are you going to click for me? I went too fast. Come on, almost. 
Okay, there they go. Maybe. I think I'll have to keep going. All right, you people are awesome. So, we actually aren't done yet. Because all maps should be small size optimized. It is incredibly common to have an empty map, to have a map with one element or a very small number of elements, and we always want to optimize for that. So we have this little small size template parameter in our map data type. But this is really annoying, because this means the type of our map has an implementation detail in it. All the small size is controlling is whether we use some out of line storage for our buffer, or whether we have this like small buffer in line, right? This is an implementation detail. I don't want my users to be interacting with this very often. So we need some way of getting rid of this implementation detail. So we introduce a map ref type, okay? This is a reference type for maps that does a very efficient type erasure of the small size, okay? And it has the same API as map, right? You can put as many APIs as you want here. Let's look at how we actually implement this clever little uh, type erasure. Oh, also, you, you have a conversion operator to get at one. All right, so the way the type erasure works is like this. Inside of the map ref, we have a few data members. Right? We have a pointer to some, some struct of data members that's shared by the actual map. This way we don't have to duplicate too much. Right? We have the small size, but instead of it being in the type, we've moved it into a data. Right? This is a nice little bit of type erasure. And then we have a pointer to this union. It's important to remember, this is a pointer to the union, and that's important because you know, sometimes we want to get at this as a small buffer, but sometimes we actually need to get at the buffer pointer and even update the buffer pointer when this type grows. Make sense? All right. The other thing that's really important for a map is that a lot of the time you have a map that is not changing and you just need to have read-only access to it. And for that, we want a map view type. The still type erases the small size. It only allows you to do const operations, so it has a narrower API. It's also faster, and I mean a lot faster. It's actually faster to use a map view than it is to directly use the map if you're going to make lots of operations on it. And so we really, really like this. How do we actually make this work? Of course, we have you know, conversion operators to turn one of these things into a view. And inside the view, we actually kind of go ahead and decompose things. We pull out the size, we pull out the small size, and we pull out entropy, which allows us to have genuine lack of order in our, in our hash table. And we put those directly into the view. And then we actually pre-compute the correct pointer to our buffer. And this may be a pointer to the small buffer, or it may be the value of buffer pointer here. And we do that when we build the map view. This means the map view uh, isn't valid across rehashing, but it means the map view is really, really fast to use. Make sense? So now we have a read-only type erased view. So we have a clean and minimal map API. Also, I do want to say uh, tons of thanks to Hanna and Jeff for Photoshop work, and to Hanna, Jeff, and Michael for uh, reviewing all of my slides, and to Jorg for giving me an actual Cherry Coke Zero. Thank you, everybody.